My granny, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know it, Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. Now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Uh, hello, folks. I'm Dick Huddleston. I guess you remember about the, uh, well, I don't know what to call it. Uh, anyway, the thing that Abner bought at an auction without intending to and without knowing what it was. Well, <laughs> that's Abner for you. Now, the old fellows have it over at the Jotham Down store, still trying to figure out what it is. Abner, are you sure they ain't a set of directions with this thing, Summers? I've looked everywhere, and I can't find none. Did you look in the box it come in? Yeah. Well, that's sure peculiar. You'd think surely with a contraption like this, they'd send some instructions with it. I reckon some of this junk ought to be put together. Yeah, I was thinking that, too. Maybe if, if we could put it together, we could tell what it is. Well, I don't know what goes where, though, Lum. That's a trouble. Sure is a batch of junk here. War, metal gadgets, and I don't know what all. Well... Just looks to me like you might as well throw the dead blame thing away. Oh, no, no, I ain't going to do that. want to find out what it is first. want to know what I'm throwing away. Granny, Abner, you ought to be bored for the samples. Huh? Here, we've just been back in business two days, and already you got everything all balled up. Well, now, Lom... Any fella that ain't got no more sense than to buy something you don't even know what it is ought to be locked up. Lom, I told you I never aimed on buying it. I was just raising my hand to knock a fly off my ear... And the auctioneer claimed I was bidding. Well, you oughtn't to went to auction in the first place. And in the second... Wait a minute. What's the matter with us? I know what'll clear this up. Well, good. What did the auctioneer call it when he was auctioning it all? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Why, that'd tell us, wouldn't it? Well, of course it would. What a couple of ninnies we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did he call it? Uh... Well, to be honest, Lum, that fly was bothering me so much, I never paid no attention to what he was saying. Oh, for goodness Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, though. I do know what he called it. Good. He called it this next item. Next item? Oh, for pity's sakes. Uh, something else he called it was a stupendous bargain. Yeah, that helps a lot. Now, there's another reason I don't want to throw it away, Lum. It's such a good bargain. Ain't often a feller gets a bargain like that. Abner, think hard now. Try to recollect what he called it. He had to call it something. Well, he said it was a, a war surplus item, I believe. War surplus? Yeah. Doggies, you don't reckon that's an Adam's bond, do you? No, of course not. Er, no. Couldn't be. I hope not. Surely. I don't believe they auction them things off no way. They don't, huh? Besides, bombs are sort of round-shaped, I think. No. Oh. This is square. Well... Let's look through the box again for some directions of some kind. Well, it ain't no use. I've looked every place. I wonder if we could have burned them up. Burned them up? Why, sure. You know, a lot of that stuff was wrapped in paper, and we throwed it in the stove. We might have thrown the directions in there, too. Oh, my goodness, I never thought of that. If you hadn't been so excited when you got it and started stirring around in the box, you might not have lost them. Well, you was excited, too. Fact is, you and Cedric was the ones that drug out most of that stuff out of the box. Yeah, no use to worry about that. That ain't going to help us none. Good. What we got to do is figure out just what this thing is. It's embarrassing having folks come in here and ask what it is and not know what to tell them. Well, I don't know why they should care. You just tell them it's mine. I'm the one that has to tell them I don't know what it is. I still think it's some kind of a radio, but I'll be dead blamed if I know how to work it. It's got a couple of dial things on there that looks like part of a radio. Well, we ain't been able to get no programs on it, though. Looks more like a big machine that I've seen in a doctor's office once. No, I don't much think so. No, no, I, I don't believe I'd buy one of them. I ain't sick. Cedric thinks it's some kind of a newfangled electric pinball machine. <laughs> For pity's sake. We spent an hour this morning trying to put nickels in it. Well, it ain't no pinball machine. I know that good. Uh, Lump, what about the words that's printed on there? Don't they mean nothing? Well, I reckon they do. It's more like the reason they put them on there. That's good thinking on your part. I notice one place here it says volume. Hmm. Down here it says voice. 
Just wondering if there's some kind of a jukebox. Jukebox? Yeah, they have them in restaurants, you know, and drugstores. Yeah, but long ain't no place to put nickels in it. Or at least way Cedric couldn't find none. Of course, now, it might be the kind you have to put dimes in. A dime will go a lot of places that a nickel won't. Yeah, that's sound reasoning. So, because I hope it is a dime machine. <laughs> that way we'd make just twice as much money. Well, it ain't a jukebox. It ain't fancy enough. Besides, I... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lom. Harley Ludson. Harley Ludson? Yeah. I ought to have thought of him in the first place. What are you talking about? Well, Lom, there's a feller that could tell us what this thing is. Yes, sir, old Harley Ludson. Well, who in the world is Harley Ludson? Oh, you recollect him? Tom Ludson's boy. Awful mechanicals minded. Knows all about machines and all that sort of junk. Yet when he was only seven year old, he taken his mama's electric washing machine clean apart, every cog in it, and he done it in nine minutes and twenty seven seconds flat. Granny, that's fast. Yes, sir. He must be a genius. He is. Well, just to show it, taking his mama three months to put it back together again. Just give you idea how smart that boy was. He was smart. Oh, he was. First, she was dumb one. No, he was smart. He had a brain up there. Well, you brain. reckon he could sure enough tell us what this contraption is? Long well, there ain't a contraption in the whole wide world that he don't know the name of. Well, then what are we waiting for? Granny, this is the best idea you ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, get on the phone there and get Harley over here. Well, that's the trouble. I can't. Harley moved to Twin Falls, Idaho, back in 1931. Er, now was it 32? Abner, someday I'm going to whop you right on top of the head. No, it was 31. I can beat bumps on your head faster than you can rub them. Well, Elizabeth, I know. I'll just call her up. No, never mind. It don't matter when he moves. Now we're right back where we started. Got a white elephant on our hands for sure. Oh, well, I... Ah. Nothing, nothing. Just What did you say? Well, Uh, I know it ain't no elephant, Lonnie. Because right. it ain't even white. I said skip it. Uh-huh. All right. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Squire Skimp heading over this way. I bound you, he'll know what it is. He knows everything. Yeah, I know he does, but I don't... Well, I sort of hate to come right out flat-footed and ask, Squire, tell you the truth. I feel kind of embarrassed. It ain't good for a man of my brains to look ignorant. Well, I don't want to ask him neither. Special, because I own it, and I ought to know what I own. Yeah, Maybe I can just sort of casually lead him into a conversation about it. Draw his attention to it, and he's bound to mention what it is. What if he don't? Well, don't worry, he will. I'll ask him some leading questions. What kind of questions? Oh, okay, up here you go. Well, howdy, Squire, old boy. Come on in. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen, how am I good friends today? <laughs> oh, gee, stolibly, Squire. <laughs> Proud to hear, Dom. Uh, by the way, I brought that little insurance policy over, the uh, one we discussed yesterday, uh, Thought you might like to glance over. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, you can lay it right here on this uh, this gadget here. Well, fine, fine. Uh, do you think this uh, gadget here is a good place to set it? Oh, yes, yes, Lom. Any place is fine. Now, I want to call your attention to Clause B, Section 5. Uh, Squire, does this policy cover everything in the store, like, for instance, this gadget here? Oh, yes, yes, certainly i tell you what, Lum, I, I have another appointment. Uh, why don't you look this over and sign it, and I'll pick it up later. Better get to them leading questions, Lum. Hey, Chef Abner. Well, I'll see you men later. Oh, great boulder fire. When did you get this thing, Lum? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if you were going to notice that. Where? You mean this thing here? Why, well, yes, yes. You're the last person in the world I'd ever expect to buy one of those. Well, actually, it belongs to Abner. To Abner? Well, that's even more surprising. It is? Yes, it looks like a good one, too. Oh, yeah, it's a dandy. No doubts about that. Uh, why don't you stand it up? you got it uh, lying on its back there. Oh, yeah, sure. What's the matter with us? <laughs> well, we just had it set that way, temporary. Yeah, yeah. I remember once uh, Mrs. Skimp and myself were shopping in a war surplus store, and we saw one of these. Mrs. Skimp didn't even know what it was. <laughs> For goodness <laughs> sake. Chick, <Jake, Jake>, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did you finally tell her it was, Squire? Oh, I, uh, well, just told her what it was, that's all. I see. Yes, you know, a good one like this, uh, if you take care of it, it'll last you a lifetime. Well, that's nice. Uh, what do you plan to use it for, Abner? Well, I, uh, sort of plan, uh... Mom, what was I going to use it for? 
Oh, uh, just uh, regular stuff. Uh, yes, well, that's the uh, way to get the most out of it, no doubt about that. You ain't got any suggests how we could use it, have you, Squire? <laughs> well, you can tell that better than I can, Long. You know what you want it for. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Yes, you're going to get a lot of good out of that, man. Yeah, I can see that. It's a good hobby to have, and I think your wife should take it up, Abner. Well, thank you. Well, I hate to rush off, but I got to. I'll uh, be back for the polish after a while. So long. Yeah, so long. Yeah, so long. Dog is he's a smart fellow. No, well, he's smart, all right. Well, we ain't no further ahead now than we was before. I don't see how he could have did all that talking and not mentioned the name of this thing just once. Well, he might have told us if you hadn't acted like you knowed so dad blame much about it. Me? You was the one that kept bowing and grinning and nodding your head. For goodness sakes, he's coming back. Uh, say, did I leave my pipe in here? Why, I don't know. I'll look around here. Squire, can I ask you a question? Why, certainly, Abner, certainly. Well, I hate to show my ignorance, but... Just what is this contraption? Why, it's a shortwave transceiver. Oh, huh, oh, sure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What's the matter with that? Uh, here's my pipe right here. Well, I'll see you later, man. Long. Yeah. What's a shortwave transceiver? I ain't got the least idea. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I right, dog is Lum. I believe you're right. I'll well, see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Hello, folks. This is Dick Huddleston again, and I have a new development for you in the mystery case concerning the contraption that Abner bought at an auction the other day. Our friend down the street, Squire Skimp, told him that it was a shortwave transceiver. But inasmuch as neither Lum nor Abner knew what that was, well, they're still in the dark. Now, that was a situation when Grandpappy Spears stopped in at John Downs to her earlier today. Come in. Yeah, hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, hurry. it's you, Grandpa. Come on in, Seth. Lum ain't here. Well, good. Maybe we can get up a game of checkers then. Why, sure, sure. That is, if you think you're up to matching wits with me. <laughs> well, for the law me sakes, what in the world is this spelling legged thing you got sitting here? Oh, that? Uh, that's a transceiver. Huh? My shortwave transceiver. I got it out there at the auction sale at the warehouse. Oh, yeah. I heard you had a new transceiver. Transceiver. Yeah, that's what I said. So this is it, huh? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Squire Skimp was in here yesterday, and he said it was an awful good one. Said the best a feller could buy. Yeah, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> a transceiver is used for... Uh, yeah, that's right, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's nice. Anytime you want to bark, Grandpa, why, well, just go right ahead. Yeah, much obliged, Abner. Sure. Might want to do that. I've been needing one. I think. Yeah, well, don't keep it too long, though. I might need it back. Hey, you know. Abner, I think I've just found out something that... Oh, howdy, Grandpa. Howdy, Lum. Y- you mean you found out what a transceiver is? Hey, wait a minute. You mean you don't know what it is, Abner? Well, uh, not exactly. For the law me sakes, what in the world you buy it for? Grandpa, I ain't had a chance to study up on it yet. Never mind. I know what it is. Ernest Macmillan told me what it is. It's a transceiver. I already know that long. Just hold on, though. A transceiver is a shortwave radio broadcasting and receiving set. It is? Yes, sir. Y- you mean we can actually broadcast on a radio with this thing? That's what Ernest Macmillan told me. What the me? mean? He seen him use these things when he was in the Army. Well, I'll be a polka-dotted possum. <laughs> oh, no, that can't be true, Long. Well, I don't know why not. All you need is a shortwave outfit, and we've got it. What do you mean, we got it? Well, you have. That's better. 
Ernest says uh, we can send out messages with it and receive them, too. Hmm. Said it was both a transmitter and receiver. I believe it, them was the words he used. He did, huh? And Ernest said there's more than likely a set of instructions inside the back part of it. In the back? Well, get to looking for them, then. I don't much believe it's a broadcasting station at all, old feller. It's just a bunch of junk. You're just jealous, Grandpap. That's your trouble. Ah, uh, prattle prattle. Yeah, prattle prattle to you, too. All right, Abner. Hitch that up. Now. Can't see no smoke. Here's the instructions. Yeah, I found them here. Good, good for just you. Just a bunch of pigeon toed junk. What do you say, Lom? Is it sure enough a broadcasting outfit? Yeah, sure. Abner, do you realize where me and you are standing? Why, uh, we're right in the middle of the store, I reckon. We're standing on the thresholds of a new career. Ah. Owners and operators of a radio broadcasting station. Grannies, I can't hardly wait to start the thing. Well, Lom, <laughs> I don't hardly think we got time to run a broadcasting station and a jot them down store, too. Where are we going to get all the singers and actors? Just all... leave all that part to me. Now, come on, let's get this transceiver set up here. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Abner, how about that game of checkers? No, no, I better help Lom now, Grandpap. Say, how about giving us a hand here? We can use a little help, I reckon. No, I just recollected something. I can't stay no longer. i got to get back to the place and see if Garfield's got there yet. Garfield? Yeah, he's a genuine bloodhound and Airedale mixed. He's a one-man dog. Well... Where'd you get him from? Come on, Abner. Let's get started here. Grandpap, where'd you get him? Luke Spears gave him to me, or at least ways he's going to give him to me. Luke bought him for a feller down there at Hatfield and got him for a watchdog at the restaurant. Well, wasn't he any good as a watchdog? Oh, yeah, sure. He sat there watching Luke all day, and when Luke wasn't looking, he'd grab off a batch of wieners or something. He ate a whole ham and a half a meatloaf. Well, if he can eat uh, Luke's meatloaf, he's got a strong stomach, I'll say that. Well, Luke said he's going to give him to me. He is, huh? Going to get shut of him. Well, what do you need a watchdog for? Need him? Listen, Abner, it ain't general note, but I've got my, my $200 buried in a can in a turnip cellar. Why don't you put it in a bank? I don't trust him, feller. Ah, oh, fiddly dee. I want my money where I can get my hands on it. Ah! Besides, i got a lot of other valuables I want protected. Name one. Come on, Abner, and cut out that jaw flapping and help me. I'm coming. Go on, Grandpa. Name one valuable. Well, there's that shell that Charity's sister gave us for Christmas. Shell? Yes, sir. A seashell. Oh, that thing that you prop the door with. Yeah. yeah, you can set your ear up again that shell, and you can hear the ocean roaring just like it was in the next room. Well, it's I don't... It's anything i ever seen in my life. Don't believe you need to worry about anybody Come stealing Come on, anything. Abner. I need help with this thing. Yeah, all right. Here, you better help us too, Grandpa. No, I want to see if Garfield's got there yet. Oh, Lord. I've got a lot of stuff I've got to get protected there. Just name one thing that you got side I that told old... you about the shell. I know that. That ain't so valuable. What else? Well, I've got that, that dinosaur bone that I bought from Ezra Seastrunk. Dinosaur? Where'd he get that? I don't know where he got it, but I gave him six dollars for it. Six dollars? Yeah, and I, I believe that dog old Garfield will be a good one to guard that. Guard it? He'll bury it. That's what he'll do. Well, that's where uh, Ezra says he got it. He did, huh? Yeah. Garfield buried it? No, I mean, he found it buried. Oh. He yeah. found down there in that lower 40 one morning and got it. Well, I do know where well, you better watch old Garfield. He'll have it buried back down there. The it looks an night. awful lot like a cow bone to me. Yeah, more likely that's what it is, a dinosaur cow, as he dug up someplace. Oh, another thing I've got there in my bedroom is that picture of uh, Mary Pickford hanging on the wall. Yeah, I'll Prettiest know yellow it. curls you ever seen in your <laughs> life. <laughs> it is. You want old Garfield to guard that for you, huh? Oh, he'll guard it. That's his <laughs> business. He's a bloodhound. Uh, you better get over and get to training him, man. That's what you better yeah, do. Yeah, ahead. I'll see you fellas later. Yeah, all right, Grandpa. Don't forget to listen to us on the radio when we get this thing started here. Yeah, I'll listen, but I don't expect to hear nothing. So long. So long. <laughs> dog, just imagine him needing a watchdog. That dog will have to bring his own valuables to make it worth his while. All right, simmer <laughs> down now and let me read these instructions. Dinosaur bone dog. Where was I at now? Oh, yeah. Turn generator upside down, attach legs LG3A in loops provided. Attach the legs? Who's mine? Well, it don't say. Belongs to you, so I reckon that's whose they be. Mom, I ain't going to walk around all day long dragging that thing. Well, I suppose you can untach it from your legs when you ain't using it. Well, I hope so. 
never would get no rest with that thing strapped to me all night long. Yeah, let me see. Attached two legs LG3A in loops provided. Now, what does that mean in loops provided? I don't know. suppose it means you attach it to your legs provided you got loops on it. Ah. Uh, Have you got loops on your legs? I don't think so. Just a minute, I'll look. Well, for the land sake... Oh, no. <laughs> Just my underwear bunched up my socker. <laughs> I think that means one of the legs on the generator. Oh, I was going to say, I don't... Leg LG2A has a seat mounted on it. That must mean me. That's the way I'm built. Well, wait a minute. We don't have to worry about this junk. We'll just get Ernest McMillan to set up the generator for us. Here's what we want. Operation. Now, wait just a minute, Lom. I don't want no operation. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Yet. Well, that just means how to operate the machine. Oh, Receiver. That's what you can be, the receiver. Good for me. Hooray, hooray. Receiver should operate with BFO on, ready for a reception of CW signals. Now, just a minute. I, I, I got to operate with what on? Receiver should operate with BFO on. What in the world is a BFO? I don't know. Don't seem to tell here no place. BFO. Let's see. Mm, initials must stand for something. Brown fur overcoat. No. <laughs> oh, because I'm going to get awful hot in the summertime. Reckon they'd know it if I just wore a heavy sweater and button it up good. Mm, well, it might not mean that, Abner. Well, what else could BFO stand for besides brown fur overcoat? Oh, well, now, it could stand for black fur overcoat, I reckon. But that's just as hot in the summertime. As well, is. I just don't think they'd set down a rule for what you have to wear when you're broadcasting. Don't reckon BFO is anything like BVD, do you? Oh, of course not. <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing right now. I ain't going to sit around here in my BVDs and operate this man. Oh, well, wait a minute. Let me look in the front part of the book here. Yeah. Let me tell what these things mean. Yeah, better look that up. Got me worried. I'm either going to burn up or freeze to death. Yeah, let's see here. For the land sakes, long. Look out there. There's old Grandpap hot putting it back over here. <laughs> Reckon what's the matter with him now? I don't know, and I don't care. Just quit interrupting me. I'm trying to read here. Thought he'd be home training that wonderful one man watchdog to guard seashells mm. and dinosaurs bones. Mm. <laughs> well, what's the matter, Grandpap? Garfield run away from you already? No, he ain't run away. I wish he would. I just thought I might help you fellas out here a little. Well, things at home cools off. Cools off? What's the matter? Your woman mad at you for something? I don't know. I ain't sore. Ain't sore? You was home, wasn't you? Yeah, but... Well, you recollect I told you about Garfield being a one-man dog? Yeah. Well, it looks like I'm the one man he don't want around there. Huh? He taken up a position on the porch and won't let me get near the place. Oh, for the land's sake, well, that's too bad. Well, Grandpap, why don't you get Charity to come outside and run him away? Why, sure. Well, a stabbing-legged hound's also a one-woman dog. And Charity's a one-woman he won't let out of the house. I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Hi there. This is Dick Huddleston. And I want to report that things are sure humming over at the Jotham Down store now that Lum found that Abner has a shortwave broadcasting set. In fact, when I left the store a while ago, he had Abner wore down to a nubbin working on the generator. Come on, Abner. Keep pumping that generator. We can't transmit less than the generator's pumped up. Lum, I'm getting tired. Well, you're sitting down. You ought to get so tired. All you have to do is just sit on that seat and pump it like a bicycle. Well, a body can get tired riding a bicycle, can't they? 
Oh, was I pumped enough here to ride clean across the United States, including Texas. Well, maybe that's enough. Let it go. Let's see now. How did Ernest tell us to work this thing? Tom, I don't believe we ought to monkey around with this thing. Well, why not? It belongs to us, don't it? Or to you, that is. Well, yeah. And Ernest McMill showed us how to run it last night. I know, Lon, but I don't know. I ain't sure I trust it. You don't trust it? All them wars and gadgets on there. No telling what might happen. Well, nothing can happen. All we do is just get it turned on and send out messages on it. Transmit them. Yeah. Let's see now. I believe Ernest said that he had about everything set on it. About all we have to do is turn on the main switch. I reckon that's this gadget right here. Switching. Listen. The one that says main switch under it. Yeah, I reckon that'd be the main switch. Yeah. Seems logical. Yes, it does. Let's see now. We were supposed to turn it on to CW. Ah. See right here it says CW. What does that mean? I don't know. All I know is you're supposed to turn the main switch to it. C-W, C-W. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to turn this standby switch to low. I recollect that. Yeah, it says, uh, says it right here in the book. When using generator, do not attempt to operate this standby switch at high. Carl Wadlow. Huh? No, because I ain't thought of him in years. Well, why, why did you think of him now? Well, C-W, Carl Wadlow... Them initials on the machine there. Oh. Well, I'm sure C.W. ain't got nothing to do with Carl Wadlow. No, no, I don't think so, neither. His name just happened to pop into my head. Carl Wadlow. Let's see here now. When transmitter is on, uh, uh... Abner, which part is the antenna system? I believe Ernie said it was this gadget right here. Oh! What's the matter? What's the matter? Oh, that I like to burn my hand clean off. What do you want to know where the antenna system was? Oh, I just said something about it in here. See, when transmitter is on, do not touch any part of antenna system. Painful burns may result. Ah. Uh, so don't touch that, Adam. Ah. Uh, well, I guess we're ready to start transmitting. Hand me the microphone there, Adam. Oh, no, I ain't going to touch nothing. Well, that won't burn you. No, no, no. Here, no. I can reach it myself. Good. Now then, press microphone switch and I'm all set. Hello? 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 Tom, I think we're just wasting our time. What do you mean, wasting our time? I don't believe nobody can hear us. Well, Ernest said we could broadcast right out over the short waves with this. Yeah, but how do we know we're doing it? We don't know if anybody's even listening. That's right, ain't it? Why, sure. Maybe we ought to have somebody listening so as we can find out if they can hear us. I know. Why don't you call up Cedric and get him to listen? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll see if he's home. Of course, now, how we know if he does hear it, though? Well, we can have him call us quick as he gets done listening to us. Yeah, but if he can't hear us, well, how'll he know when he gets done listening? Well, he... Oh, Granny, let's see now. Now, wait a minute. Hello? Is Cedric at home, please, Mom? Uh, can I speak with him? Here, Long. You better talk to him. You understand this better than I do. Yeah, maybe I better. Yeah, take it, boy. I think I know a way we can work. Oh, look Hello, is that you, Cedric? This is Lum. Oh, pretty good. Uh, listen, Cedric, I want you to sit in front of your radio set and see if you can hear me broadcasting on Abner's shortwave set. Yeah, that's right. Turn the dial to Summers Twixt uh, 60 and 90. Ernest MacMillan said you ought to be able to pick us up Summers around there. That's it. Now, don't hang up the phone, Cedric. Just leave the receiver off the hook, and quick as I'm done broadcasting, you can get back on the phone. All right. Uh, go over to your radio now. All right. All right, Abner, you take the receiver and listen for Cedric's report. Yeah, I'll here. Right. Yeah. I'm going to transmit. Go on. Go on. I know just how Marconi and Edison and them fellas must have felt. Switch. You got the switch turned over to Carl Wadlow? Yeah. Hello, Cedric. This is Lum Edwards transmitting. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 It is now 9.30 a.m. The sun is shining. It is not raining rain to me. It's raining violets. Ah. Uh. Hello. Hello. One, two, three, four, Wolf. Max Wolf. All right, Cedric, go back to the telephone now. Oh. All right, Amory, you take over now. Oh, yeah. Hello? Give him Hello? Time. Give him time to get over to the phone. Hello, Cedric. Cedric? 
Cedric, say something, Dad. Blame it. Well, maybe he ain't there yet. Well, he just has to walk about ten steps. The radio's in the same room with the telephone. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cedric, could you hear him? You couldn't, huh? Hmm. Ask him if he had the dial turned somewhere to 60 and 90. Did you have it turned to 60 and 90? You sure now? Well, tell him to listen again. Maybe I wasn't transmitting loud enough. I don't know. Go back to your radio and we'll try it again, Cedric. Yeah, all right. Go ahead, Long. Might be you have to talk louder over these than you do a telephone. Maybe this short wave's uh, shorter than we think. Might be. Hello, Cedric. This is Lum Eddards transmitting frequently between 60 and 90. Hello. Hello, Roger. I thought she was talking to Cedric. One, two, three, four, testing. Well, Hello, Cedric. Go back to the phone now, Cedric. Granny, he ought to have been able to hear that. Ought to have been able to hear that without no short way, Seth. Is he on the phone yet? I can't hear nothing. Cedric, get over to the phone. That boy, he's the slowest critic. Oh, wait a minute. He must be coming. Heard him stumble over something. Cedric, could you hear him this time? You couldn't, huh? I'll be that blame. Ask him if he's right up close to his radio. Uh, was you right up close to your radio? Did you listen good? Uh-huh. Well, just a minute. Said he couldn't hear a thing, Mom. Said he had his head right inside the radio set. I must be doing something wrong here. Tell him to keep listening. I'll try to figure out something else to do here. Uh, Cedric, go back to your radio and keep listening. Yeah, you better hang up. I'll call back later. I better read the instructions over once more. Yeah, you better do that. Oh, well, howdy, Grandpa, yeah, old boy. Howdy, Abner, howdy. How's everything over at your place? Uh, I don't know. I ain't in, been in it since yesterday. You ain't? Didn't you sleep at home last night? Yeah. How can I with that pigeon-toed watchdog I got? Garfield? <laughs> Law me, ain't he let you in the house yet? Let me in. He won't let me get near the place. Well. Sit there growling and snarling like I was a teetotal stranger. I even showed him my social security card, but never made no difference. I'm getting to where I hate and despise that hound. I don't blame you. I walked around the place waiting for him to simmer down to the joint water in my knee bones like to give out. <laughs> well, you got to admit he's a good watchdog. Oh, yeah. Sure ain't nobody going to steal that $200 you want him to guard. No, it looks like I'm going to use it up paying for a room to sleep in. Yeah, well, him and you are more likely to get used to one another for long. Yeah, if I don't starve in the meanwhile. It's hard on a dog, but you ought to do it. I snuck home at daybreak this morning for some breakfast, but old Garfield was up already, sitting there growling and ornery looking as ever. And he won't even let your woman Charity out of the house neither, huh? No. <laughs> well, he let her out with a big stack of hot cakes for me and a whole pitcher of melted butter and brown sugar syrup. Oh, they look good. Oh, well, ain't nobody makes hot cake like Aunt Charity. I bound you they tasted something wonderful, didn't they? Well, how would I know? Garfield had them down before every Charity got off in the back stoop. <laughs> then he chased her back in the house. For more, I reckon. Oh, oh <laughs> man. Then Charity made up a sack full of sandwiches and throwed them out the window to me. Clean over the fence. Well, that's a good idea. Only trouble is Garfield raced me for it. And I lost. Oh, man. I give up then, head down to the lunchroom. There goes more of my money. Yeah, you got a problem, all right. Hey, Grandpa, maybe you're just going to have to buy a new place and right? give that in the car. As I can tell from these instructions, I done everything exactly right. What'd you say, Lom? Uh, oh, we were just trying to transmit here, Grandpa. What was it, Lom? I uh, see. I've done everything right according to the instruction. Yeah, we had Cedric listening over at his place, but he couldn't hear nothing. I wonder if it'd do any good to turn the hose on him. Who, Cedric? No, on Garfield. i got to get shut of that varmint somehow. Oh, yeah. Only thing I can see is just keep trying to transmit. Maybe it just takes a while for these things to get warmed up. Here, Abner, you take the microphone and do the talking this time. Oh, I don't know what to say, Lamont. Well, it don't matter what you say. Maybe you got a better shortwave voice than me. You're shorter than I am. That might have something to do with it, too. I, I might be too tall for a short wave. Go ahead, Adam. I can't think of nothing to say. Just say anything like I done. Hello? Hello? Hello, Cedric. Hello, Mr. Abner. Hey, Lom, I got him. Hello, Cedric. Can you hear me? Yes, Mom. Oh, did you hear that, Lom? He can hear well, me. Well, he ought to. He's standing right behind you there. Huh? Cedric, what you doing over here? I thought we told you to stay home set by the radio. Well, I couldn't hear nothing, so I, I figured maybe I was too far away and thought I'd better come over here. Well, that ain't the idea, Cedric. You're supposed to be able to hear this thing a long ways off. 
You sure you sat right close to your radio? Yes, Mom. I had my ear right up again. See, it's got the print of the speaker right on it. There. Look at that. Did you turn the dial to where Long told you to? Yes, Mom. Twixt 60 and 90, right smack in the middle. Yeah. I just don't understand it. Cedric, tell me exactly what you've done now after you turned your radio on. Well, I sat down and uh, then I started... Uh, Mom, after I done what? After you turned your radio on. Well, I'll be dog go. What's the matter, <laughs> Cedric? Well, you never told me to turn it on. It never once entered my head. Oh, for the land's sake. You know something? That might be part of the trouble right there. Mm-hmm. 